Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kyle Tweet. I'm the Communications Coordinator for the Department of Labor. Uh, appreciate you all joining us this morning, uh, this Monday morning, May 10th, uh, for our webinar on the work search requirement for unemployment insurance claimants. So today we'll be going through a very step-by-step -step approach and process for the information that you all need to know as unemployment insurance claimants on what information and what the steps will be for you um, when you are actually entering the work that you are searching for and the activity that you are doing this week. Uh, so just as a reminder, uh, just you know, kind of as we go through this today, uh, do encourage questions in the chat and look forward to uh, you know, getting those and, and answering very specific questions on you know, what information is needed uh, as you're entering your work search information. Uh, so again, today, as with all of our past presentations, today's presentation will be recorded uh, and we'll be adding that as a link to our YouTube channel. I'll be providing the link a little bit later on uh, in today's presentation. Uh, under our work search page, there's actually links to all of our past webinars on work search, as well as our uh, few of our future, uh, well, all of our cert, all of our future uh, webinars and town halls. Uh, with representatives from our unemployment insurance divisions um, with links again to past presentations uh, on our YouTube channel. So again, just kind of how today will flow. Uh, we'll have a speaker from our unemployment insurance division who I'll introduce in just one second. Uh, but again, just in terms of how today will flow, uh, do encourage uh, questions in the chat. Uh, basically how that works is you all submit questions. I review them and add and publish them. Uh, so my helpful what's helpful for me as the moderator and for um, our and for our speaker who will be jumping on in just a second uh, is if you can review those questions that are already in the chat uh, and you can actually have the ability to give those a thumbs up and which means that uh, we'll be filtering questions by you know how many uh, how important they are, if you will, to all of you. Uh, so essentially, if you can just like questions, if you want to hear them answered, uh, that would be helpful for us. Well, we'll be giving a, a background on work search today and just kind of, you know, just kind of an overarching view of what to expect and what information. Uh, and as I said earlier, what specific steps you have to take in order to enter your work search for those of you who um, may have you know, never been on unemployment insurance uh, benefits before um, or for those of you who may just need a refresher. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, COVID-19, there are ex exemptions uh, to uh, the work search. So we'll be going over those exemption questions and, uh, you know, those yes, no questions and, and what to expect uh, for that. You know, and then also, you know, in terms of the information that you specifically need for your job contacts. Uh, as well when you're entering your work search. So uh, just as again, please feel free to, to, to ask any and all questions during today's presentation. Again, just wanted to uh, say I'll turn this over to uh, Deb Bruce uh, from our unemployment insurance uh, division in just one second. Uh, but again, Deb, you know, as uh, I'll turn it over to you, but again, I, I think folks just need to know uh, obviously work search was reinstated on May 9th, which was yesterday, uh, but they don't actually have to do anything other in terms of entering the information in terms of the reporting aspect uh, until next week. So this week is really about that work search activity. So with that, Deb, I will uh, turn it over to you uh, to walk us through the presentation. Great. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Deb Bruce. I'm with the uh, Department of Labor, Unemployment, Insurance and Wages Division. Uh, and as Kyle, um, uh, said at the beginning, I'm going to uh, be the representative to uh, take you through um, the work search requirements and how to uh, capture and report that information when you file your weekly claim. Uh, so uh, to repeat uh, briefly what Kyle just said, um, we reinstated the work search requirement on the 9th, which was yesterday. Um, and that means that for um, your work search activities, you will be do, conducting these activities this week. Um, you will not report your work search information until you go to file your claim, and that begins as early as Sunday the 16th. So again, you're capturing your work search information during the claim week, and you report it when it's time to file that week's claim. 
the following week. And this information uh, must be entered online through the claimant portal. And you can, yep, thank you, Kyle. Uh, so the very first step um, is logging into the claimant portal. The quickest way to get there uh, is from the Department of Labor's main website. And uh, on that page, um, you'll find the quick links section. And right near the top is the link to file your weekly unemployment claim. And so again, uh, that's where you want to begin this process. Um, information that you'll want to um, be capturing or taking down for your work search information. I'll, I'll go over those specific areas. Um, you'll want to log the date of your contact. Uh, so again, dates are important. Uh, the work search contacts that you make this week would be dated uh, from the 9th uh, through the 15th. Um, and this information you will enter when you go to file this week's claim uh, beginning with next Sunday. So you'll want the date of your contact, the type of work you're seeking. Uh, that could be just a brief one or two word description. Uh, the name of the employer, the employer's address, the person that you contacted, uh, and if there is no specific contact name, you can put uh, something like human resources or personnel. If you are responding to um, an online um, job search engine such as Indeed or Monster, uh, oftentimes there will be um, a job ID or, or some something in the um, in the application field to identify the job that you're uh, applying for. Uh, and lacking any of those types of specific things that you can jot, lot, um, you know, jot down, just put the name of the engine. Uh, so if it was through indeed.com, uh, you can put indeed as the contact person. So there, there's a little bit of flexibility when you're using some of these online uh, job search engines. Um, we would like a phone number as well and then the method of contact uh, and you will indicate whether that was in person through a resume a telephone call or email and then lastly is the result of your job contact and that um, may be um, interview or you're still uh, waiting to hear back that's a very common result Oftentimes, um, once you've made the contact, um, uh, you won't really have a result for some time later. Uh, so it's OK to put uh, waiting or pending in that field. OK, and the work search questions, these are all yes and no questions. Um, there are eight basic questions plus our um, exemption questions, which we're going to go over uh, right now. And so the specific COVID exemption questions uh, are as follows. Have you been instructed by a healthcare provider to quarantine due to COVID-19? Have you been instructed by a healthcare provider to not return to work because you have a serious health condition and returning to work at this time poses a significant risk due to COVID-19? Are you the primary caregiver for a child whose child care is unavailable as a direct result of COVID-19? Are you the primary caregiver for a child who is attending virtual or remote school as a direct result of COVID-19? Are you caring for a family member who has been instructed by a healthcare provider to quarantine due to COVID-19? And it's a very important to bear in mind that um, more than one of these may apply. So it's OK to answer yes to one or all of these questions. And, and again, uh, be thinking very carefully about how the question is worded. And if it does in fact apply to you, uh, if you answer yes to any of these questions, you are exempted from having to enter specific words work search information and you will be bypassed 
for the page with the work search information. And as things develop, we'll provide more information and any clarifiers um, on these questions. Um, so uh, any information as it comes in, we'll, we'll be making sure to update um, claimants and providing information on our website. OK, so uh, again, the minimum requirement for uh, contacts is three each week. Uh, you can certainly do more than that on your own, um, but for unemployment under both federal and state unemployment insurance law, the minimum here is three each week. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm going to go down the list um, uh, really quick here. You want to make sure you're recording the date of the contact and the type of work. Uh, employer information such as the name and address. Contact details would be the name of the person you spoke with, uh, phone number and email. And again, uh, if some of this information is not present because uh, you're applying through something like Indeed or Monster, um, if there is not a job ID number, just put the name of the search engine that you used. And then lastly, method of contact and the result of that contact. And what Kyle is uh, showing you now is what the screen actually looks like. Um, I want to point out um, the little question marks uh, that you see next to each box. If you're not sure, how to enter information, uh, or if you need a hint about what to put in that field, um, you can click or hover on the question mark and that will provide you instruction for that text box. Now this is a screenshot. Uh, we're not using uh, a dynamic page, so we can't show you what that looks like. Um, but each of these boxes where you see the red asterisk, that means that that's a required field. So you must put information in those boxes. And if you get stuck, uh, again, uh, right next to those red dots uh, is a little question mark, and that's there to help you and assist you with the data entry uh, into those text box or text boxes, I should say. OK, and um, another reminder that this, these questions are going to be asked of you each week and you will complete them each week and answer every single one of those questions as they apply to you for that week that you are filing for. Um, and this uh, is also um, tied to you able and available. Um, what we uh, need for information is um, whether individuals are both able and available uh, to seek work. Um, and again, there, um, this is also where those exemption questions can come into play, where folks may be able to work, uh, but are unavailable due to um, a potential COVID qualifying scenario or scenarios. If you do not have a COVID exemption in your situation, then the expectation is that you are able and available for the week you're filing for to be seeking and accepting work. And you must certify that each, each and every week that you file. Um, when you finish answering your questions, you will be asked to confirm the information that you have provided before you will click on to the next screen in the claimant portal. OK, and by not completing your work search information, that can have an impact on your eligibility for benefits. Um, able and available um, is a week to week. Uh, eligibility and by uh, not performing a work search, if you are required to perform one that may cause an issue on your unemployment claim and potentially the um, possibility to repay benefits or receive penalty weeks 
on your unemployment insurance claim. So it's very important that you are completing this each week that you file for benefits for unemployment. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much, Deb. Thank you. I appreciate you walking us through that. Uh, I just want to recap the information uh, that, that Deb just walked us through. Uh, so again, in terms of uh, the online claimant portal, uh, again, this presentation was specific to uh, regular unemployment insurance claimants or those on um, extended benefits through parts of the Federal CARES Act. Uh, I did see some questions in the chat about PUA. Uh, we will be having some specific uh, set. We will have a specific uh, session on PUA uh, for later this week. Uh, so I would encourage anybody asking questions about self-employed or freelancers or general contractors, anybody on PUA to attend that uh, later on. But uh, just to recap again, um, for those of you who will be filing uh, and reporting your work search next week, um, you know, just as you do on a normal week when you're filing online. I know a lot of you are, have been uh, filing over the phone. We'll, we'll get to those questions in just a minute, uh, but you will be file, submitting this online. So logging into the claimant portal uh, through the website, you'll first be asking uh, your circumstances. So a lot of those yes, no questions. Again, I have seen um, some specific circumstances in the chat. Um, I think what we've talked about before uh, really is for you to self-assess uh, and self-attest uh, as to whether or not your specific circumstances are um, specific to COVID, um, and if your circumstances have your circumstances have been um, impacted as a result of the pandemic and COVID as a whole. Um, so, just answering those yes or no questions, I'm not asking you to provide any detail. Uh, really at this time um, as a part of the answering of the questions process, um, you know, and just answering those five questions uh, for those COVID exemptions. Uh, as, as Deb said, you can answer yes or no to any or all of those. Uh, and then once you've worked through those five questions, depending on your answers, um, if you're exempt, you won't have to provide information um, on your job contacts. You'll move on to the eligibility questions as you normally would. Um, if you uh, were not exempt from work search, uh, you'll be asked to provide the information on each of your three uh, job contacts. Uh, so again, after you've submitted your job contacts, moving through to answer your eligibility questions and confirming <laughs> Uh, your weekly filing. So uh, Deb, just wanted to give you an opportunity to, to add anything to that, just providing an overview and a recap um, of that process uh, for folks that that may. So uh, if you have anything to add, definitely would encourage you if I missed anything. Sure, sure. Um, uh, one other thing I did not speak to earlier um, is that um, to better prepare yourself for filing each week, uh, it's a good idea to make sure that you've gathered all of this information together uh, before you actually uh, start the process of filing the actual weekly claim. Um, there is uh, a timeout for each page. Um, it's, uh, it's quite lengthy. It's uh, 30 minutes for each page. So that is quite a long time, um, but it is possible uh, if you start the process of entering information and then step away um, to go find information or a phone number, uh, it's possible to time out when you're filing um, and then you would basically have to start all over. Uh, the system will not save your information midstream. Um, so it's a good idea to be um, jotting down this place, uh, this information in, in one place and keeping it for later reference. Uh, another um, criteria for uh, work search and work search information is work search validation, which the department does do uh, randomly uh, as a requirement under both federal and state unemployment insurance law. Um, at this time, we, we will not be doing that immediately, uh, but that will change in the future, so it's very important to be keeping your weekly work search information somewhere where you can obtain it rather easily in the event you are later asked to validate your work search information to the department. Um, on our website, under the claimant forms section, uh, there is a work search form that you can easily download and print if you have that capability. Uh, if not, um, anything 
uh, a notebook, a notepad, uh, just something to be capturing and keeping this information handy if you needed to provide it in the future. Uh, and uh, this may come up in chat questions or, or may have already been posed, but for individuals uh, without a computer, um, keep in mind that uh, most libraries in your communities are um, open for some limited hours at least, and most of them have a computer. Uh, so that is a good resource um, if you are now going to be required to file a work search uh, and you're struggling uh, with a computer. Um, you could also potentially reach out to your local town clerk and they may have more information about resources in your community or things like computer access and internet. Uh, so just a couple of things I wanted to throw out there. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, so I do want to pivot over to questions before we do that. I just want to remind folks um, that today's presentation has been recorded. I know we've gone through a lot of information in only about 20 minutes, so appreciate um, you all bearing with us and we'll do our best to answer as many questions today as we can. Um, for those of you who want to go back and review, uh, feel free to search the Vermont Department of Labor on YouTube or go to our website at labor.vermont.gov. Um, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can go to our website and also just click on the specific links. We should have this uh, recording up before the before the end of the day today. Uh, just as a reminder, this uh, this process is not anything that you have to worry about for this week, which is because we talked today specifically about the reporting of work search. This week is really about um, the actual work search activity. Um, so, Deb, I, I'm just going to go down through the questions again, just for those of you who are going through and, and typing your questions into the chat. I'm trying to add them in as, as we go through. Um, but if you see a question in the chat, I would encourage you to, to go back through and, and like the questions uh, because that's how um, the most liked questions is kind of the, the process for how uh, we'll go through the questions. Um, for, for Deb today. So uh, Deb, the first question is from Sarah, and I think you actually talked to this, but I think it's a good point to reinforce. Uh, when applying for a position online, whether it be through Indeed, Glassdoor, um, I know Vermont Job Link as well uh, is the requirement uh, for uh, unemployment insurance claimants. Uh, who do you enter as a contact person when entering WorkSource activity? Most online applications don't provide a, a contact name. Uh, so I know you actually talked about this, but I think it's, a, as I said, a good point to, to reinforce. Yes, yes. Thank you very much for the question, Sarah. Um, when using um, one of the example websites that you um, provided in your question, um, if there is not a specific um, recruitment number or um, alphanumeric identifier for that particular posting uh, that you can reference. Uh, the best thing to do is um, just reference the name of the site or, or that particular job search engine that you are using. Uh, so if it was through indeed.com, you can just put indeed.com in that field as the contact person. Great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Noah asks, I've been hired for a position, but it does not start until September. Do I still need to show weekly job search progress? Um, Deb, I know uh, Cameron has talked to this in some of our previous sessions. Um, in terms of the a return to work date, um, you know, I think, you know, that obviously is is something that that we've talked about this case, as I, as I mentioned, it, it, Cam has spoken to in previous sessions. I believe it was uh, 10 weeks from your initial initial claim. Um, you know, I know, you know, certainly there's uh, other sites sorts of activities, but applying the goal of unemployment insurance obviously is to get you back to uh, full time employment. So I don't know, Deb, if you have anything to add in terms of um, Noah's question, um, or we can certainly refer him back to uh, some of our previous sessions as well. I think this question, uh, and thank you for that question, Noah, may require a little bit more um, clarification internally. Um, that is correct that the 10, uh, the 10 week waiver uh, begins from the date of the initial claim filing, uh, but with the um, across the board exemption of work search having been um, in place for such a long time, 
uh, what we need to verify is, is there going to be a starting date from which we will start to pick up the 10 week going forward? Um, and that is something that uh, I'm not sure of at this time. So we would need to get some more information on that. Uh, but um, that being the case, um, with the question still a little bit up in the air, Noah, uh, the answer would be yes. Uh, you would still need to be conducting uh, a work search if you wish to continue to file up until the start date of your new position. Um, and if that ends up to um, not be the case, um, your claim information would be updated and you would then be exempted going forward. Um, so um, if you are able to um, send us a, a little bit more information, um, we can do some research uh, and provide some better clarity on your question. Yeah, Deb, I, I do just want to uh, add that uh, we are, I just brought it up here, we, we are having a couple more sessions um, like our previous work search uh, town halls starting tomorrow um, for work search exemptions, part time employees and suitable work. Uh, so that's tomorrow at 1230. Uh, and then we'll also have a work search town hall specific to uh, PUA claimants on Wednesday uh, for those who uh, may be impacted. Uh, Deb, I do want to pivot. I have seen a lot of questions um, in the chat popping up about um, claimants who have not been over the last few weeks, months, what have you, uh, to actually file online uh, for whatever reason. And they've been, uh, whether it's calling our Claimant Assistance Center or filing through uh, the, I believe it's the IVR, uh, but the the automatic uh, assistance line. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't know if you could provide, um, I know we are telling people that and we are letting everyone know that they will be able to uh, file online, um, you know, because that will be part of the requirement to submit their work search information online. So just didn't know if you could address uh, those questions. Have not necessarily one of the most liked questions, but um, have seen that kind of popping up as we've been talking today. So just wanted to address that for folks. Yes, yes. Um, with the work search requirement now um, back in, in place as of the 9th, um, information um, must be entered through the online portal um, as there, uh, there is not a mechanism through the automated telephone system to provide that information. And so that's why uh, many folks will see um, the requirement for them to switch the, the method in which they've been filing from uh, calling in each week to actually uh, migrating themselves to the online claimant portal. And, and again, that's um, due to functionality. Uh, there's no mechanism for the phone uh, to intake uh, any sort of work search information. Great. Uh, uh, I, I do want to just uh, let folks know too that uh, we are focusing today on more of the step-by-step the -step process for entering a work search. Um, so those of you asking questions about, you know, do I have to take a specific job or, you know, re relating on salary or, you know, the type of work that's available, I would encourage you to, to check out our past sessions. Uh, the recordings uh, are on our website as well as tomorrow's session we'll, we'll, where we'll be getting a little bit more into that, um, you know, whether it's return to work dates or whatnot. Um, just kind of looking through again, um, you know, Deb, I think there's a lot, well, still a lot of questions that I've seen uh, about uh, Matt asks when I've applied or sent in a resume online. Many times a contact phone number isn't listed. Um, so what should we do in respect to unemployment filing? Um, so again, going back to those, just going to scroll back up uh, to the information that we're asking for. So yeah, I know I know you mentioned um, if a contact person's name isn't available, but uh, what would be your suggestion, whether if it's an email address or uh, a phone number? Um, what's your best suggestion um, for individuals who, who may not just have a complete um, uh, I guess list of all the information that's available if they if they if they're applying online? OK, let's see. So um, not having a phone number listed is not um, all that unusual. Um, we do 
tend to see that sometimes um, uh, for the indeed.com type of uh, work search uh, engines that, that are out there. Um, in the absence of, of any um, phone number, uh, what individuals can do is uh, put all nines in the phone number field. Um, and that would be, for example, 999-999-999. So that's a workaround if there isn't uh, isn't any telephone number listed. Uh, so uh, because that is a required field, that's um, that's a workaround that you can use to uh, have information in that field so you can proceed to the next page. Great. Uh, just kind of looking through some of the other questions. I think they're they're more about what uh, can count as a valid work search, and I know Cam uh, Cameron has talked this in the past. Um, Individuals asking, can today's town hall or can other webinars that the department puts on, even specific on workforce development or virtual job fairs count as a work search contact? Um, I know that uh, Cameron has has talked to this in the past that they that none of those things can actually count um, as a work search contact as it actually needs to be the the application of a specific specific job. And Deb, I don't know if you have anything to add other and I'll just add, I'll just finish by saying that um, a lot of those specific questions are on our website um, and there's circumstances that you can look to on our website about what actually classifies uh, as a valid uh, work search uh, job contact. Um, so Deb, not sure if you have anything to add to that or if you want to just kind of move through to some of the uh, next questions. Um, I can um, just speak to that really quickly. Um, what I uh, did this morning was to print off the work search information from our web page. Um, and I'll just quickly hit specifically uh, the information that's listed under the section of what is an acceptable job contact. And uh, this says that you can satisfy the work search requirement by providing information in the work search section of the online weekly claim uh, that includes any of the following. Um, so this would be submitting an application for a job or jobs that you are reasonably qualified for, contacting your former employer to inquire if they can bring you back to work at this point, or contacting an employer by telephone, in person, or email with a formal request for hire. Um, and so uh, I no worries on trying to remember all of that. As I said, I've actually taken this specific information right from the Vermont Department of Labor's website uh, on the specifically our work search information page. Great. Thank you for doing that. That's very helpful. <laughs> um, just continuing to go through some of the questions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just kind of going through uh, a couple questions, uh, one from Deb and, and one from another uh, viewer for today um, about work search that they may have completed, you know, what about, you know, whether it's a, applying for a job in, in previous weeks, so before May 9th. Um, so for the first work search, may I use applications completed um, from the past? three weeks. Um, Deb proposes a scenario where um, she applied for a job last week um, and waits to, and is waiting to hear back from the organization. Um, you know, I know that, that you just went through what counts. Deb actually goes into um, having an interview and in, in whether it's this week or next week, um, you know, in terms of you just went through what actually counts as a job uh, job contact. Um, but I know that the the job contacts actually have to take place i believe during um like this specific week correct so you know you're right. reporting next week for you know think the activities that you did this week so i'll let you go ahead and explain that right yes that's absolutely uh, correct kyle and that is uh, a great question deb um but the uh, work search uh, must be conducted in the active claim week that you later file for uh, so as Kyle just said, that would mean um, that you would be conducting uh, work search activities for the week we are currently in, um, the 9th through the 15th, and then you would report 
uh, three of those contacts when you go to file your weekly claim. So yes, unfortunately, we, we can't go backwards on those. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. I lost my spot. Uh, just in terms of um, entering jobs, um, is there any information uh, that folks would need to know if they're applying for a job? Let's say they live for jobs in another state. So, you know, if, if there's any specific information, if they're applying, if they live on the, if they live in Vermont, but, the, you know, close to one of our bordering states, um, if they're applying for a job in Massachusetts or New Hampshire or New York, um, you know, this individual is asking, can we do that? But, you know, is there any information that they would need to provide um, if they're doing that? Anything specific? Uh, that's a wonderful question. And uh, no, there is not anything more specific um, that we would need. Um, and to expand on that uh, a little bit, um, it is in fact okay to look for work um, out of the state of Vermont. Uh, it's not uncommon for individuals to um, find a position and completely relocate um, clear across the country. So if you are uh, uh, in that particular situation where you are looking to actually relocate out of the state uh, as part of your work search activities, that's absolutely fine. There's no restriction on um, on residency as it as it pertains to your work search activities. Great. And then Deb, the question, same kind of thing um, about federal jobs. Uh, so it looks like the, the federal the question is, uh, what about federal jobs? There's not usually an email uh, or phone number to contact because they're all interested in USA jobs. Is it pretty much the same process if an email or phone number um, wasn't provided um, for yeah. a, a job on Indeed? Okay. Yeah, um, that's correct. Great. Let's see. Just again, as, as you're looking through the chat, uh, please feel free to look through questions that have already been asked. I'm gonna We're going to try to get through uh, as many as we can. Uh, for those questions that we don't get through, I uh, would encourage you to check out our past uh, sessions. I know I've seen a lot of questions on, on part-time jobs and how that works. Um, Deb, I'm not sure if you have anything to add on, on part-time jobs and how to enter that as a whole. Um, I know that can, can count as one of your weekly contacts. Uh, those that are on part-time work, I believe still do have to submit for three contacts each week, but your part time job can count for one of your three. Um, am I correct in any of that or did you want to add to to anything on on part time um, for those that are working part time? Deb? That's absolutely correct. Yes. Um, so the uh, the requirement is still three total uh, work search contacts, uh, uh, but the part time employer um, is counted as one, that information would be entered, and then just the two additional contacts for the week. And Deb, just for those that are, are wondering, I have a question about what is actually considered to be part-time, um, you know, just in terms of the number of hours, you know, in a given week. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll let you address that. Uh, just again, what, what is actually considered to be part-time work from, from our perspective when you're actually entering it? Um, in terms of unemployment? Uh, well, traditionally, we tend to think of uh, part time as around 20 to 25 hours. Um, but essentially, um, if an individual um, is working less than 35 hours in any given week, uh, then under uh, unemployment insurance program rules, uh, that individual would be considered underemployed and would be still potentially eligible for benefits. Um, so there, there isn't really a, a specific um, legal definition necessarily, uh, just that if you are uh, working less than 35 hours, you can still potentially receive a partial benefit for the claim week that you're filing for. Yes, yes. thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I was uh, coughing and didn't want to have that on the on the, on the <laughs> audio. 
Um, and so there was a question about uh, part time work and how many hours or in order to still receive the federal uh, $300 benefit. Uh, that $300 benefit and debt, please feel free to correct me. Um, I believe is if you receive one dollar of unemployment insurance benefits from the state, you do you do still get the extra that extra um, three hundred dollars as a part of the benefits coming from uh, the federal government through the uh, federal pandemic unemployment compensation of PUC. Um, so again, if there's if you're receiving any benefits from the state, you would still be uh, in theory. You know, obviously all other eligibility questions uh, concern. You know. All uh, uh, you have to answer all your other eligibility questions. Um, you would still be able to receive that the extra three hundred dollars. That's sorry, right. That, yep. Correct. Great. Um, let's see. And and Deb, I think we have about uh, 15, 20 more minutes here, so I just wanted to try to get to uh, a few more questions um, before we we wrap for today. Um, just kind of looking through. Um, let's see here uh, again, just some continued questions about the online portal uh, being fixed um, so we can file. I've had trouble um, for my past few weeks of not accepting my pin uh, and I've had to call um, again. Just, you know, I think you've talked about that uh, already, but I know uh, our our teams are working on uh, getting some of that fixed. And I know also that it um, is very much dependent on individual claimants and their circumstances as well. Correct, correct. Um, any any problems experienced uh, with the um, online filing uh, itself? Uh, you know, if you are attempting to um, enter information and it's just not working, um, individuals can still, of course, um, speak to an, an agent by phone to try and troubleshoot um, what might be going on. Um, one tool that the department has uh, on its side is a test filing portal, uh, and we use that in concert uh, when speaking with folks by phone to try and help walk them through uh, what's happening. And oftentimes um, it could be um, a formatting issue uh, with a text field uh, or or some other thing that is actually uh, tends to be minor. Um, so we do have that ability to uh, troubleshoot um, certain filing problems. Um, and if we do, however, encounter a situation where um, the portal does not seem to be working, uh, then uh, we can still take claim information and you will still be required to provide your work search information to the department. Um, but we you know, certainly will approach things on a case by case basis if there are actual filing problems. Great, thank you. Um, I do just want to encourage folks again, just reminding you that today's presentation um, has been recorded. Uh, that'll be up. I have the link up for our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it'll be up directly on YouTube as well as on our website. I do just want to encourage people as well um, to uh, check out our website again for continued uh, information that we'll be updating. I know as well uh, we're going to be sending emails uh, directly to claimants as well. Uh, again, today's presentation really is about the specifics that information you'll need to know when you are submitting uh, for a work search. Um, again, happy to to look into you know some of the other things as we go into some of the other sessions. Um, Deb, do have a question here. Uh, we talk, we've actually talked a lot about Indeed and Vermont Joblink and the other sites that are more of those third party sites. Uh, again, just want to remind folks that Vermont Job Link is a requirement uh, for unemployment insurance claimants. You do need to have an account in order to uh, be eligible to receive benefits. Uh, there's links on how to uh, create an account on our website. Um, so please feel free to check that out. We've also actually uploaded a video uh, to our YouTube channel as well on uh, how to create an account for a job seeker. Uh, but Deb uh, actually had a question 
Um, what if you apply directly on a company's web a website? Uh, so applying directly through the company, um, you know, presumably a lot of the information would be uh, directly on the website. Uh, but if you can't find uh, a contact person, uh, would presume you, you know, would presume that you would kind of do something similar to what you do with Indeed, um, where you enter the. Um, just going to scroll back up to the uh, questions, but just if you want to talk through, uh, if you're applying on a directly to a company uh, through their uh, website. Yes, absolutely. Um, so in the um, scenario where you're applying to a company's uh, online application uh, portal directly. Uh, and there isn't a specific uh, name uh, or anything like that uh, provided, um, you can um, repeat, you could repeat the name of the company. So uh, for example, uh, person contacted, uh, you could put uh, IBM um, and then under address, uh, you know, you could um, put the address information there. Uh, in some situations, you may actually have to uh, Google some of the information or search uh, for a few bits of the contact information um, through the Internet. Uh, but any anything that um, is simply not provided, um, uh, it's it's always good to point back to uh, the source, uh, the source name of the company or the job search engine that you use to apply for for the position um, and again the one specific workaround uh, for the phone number information if that's not available is to use all nines for that field and the email address that is the one um, field that is not a mandatory field so if you don't have an email address for the company or a specific person um, that's OK. Uh, we always like to see that information when it is available, uh, but the email address is not a required field, but everything else is. Awesome. awesome. Uh, I have a question here uh, referencing return to work dates um, and actually where to enter that um, on the claimant portal. I know it's we don't have a screenshot for that. Uh, today, but um, I guess Deb, if you do have a return to work date uh, that you are uh, that your employer has told you that you'd be uh, be able to return to work, whether it's on a part time or full time basis, um, it, it, I know you enter that through the the payment portal. But do you, are you able to talk through uh, kind of just where and, and how to do that? Uh, the return to work date information is. Uh, actually provided and or updated uh, by the employer. And so if if a return to work date is now available uh, or has uh, changed, whether it's been pushed out or or um, pushed back to an earlier date, um, the employer can actually go on the department's website. There is a specific section for the employer community to uh, enter that information themselves through a self-service function. Uh, and then that information is then attached to the claim. So it's it's really the responsibility of the employer to get us that information and not the burden of the claimant. Excellent. Yeah, and so I think it's really just reaching back out to uh, your, your employer uh, to let the department know uh, that they have had uh, your return to work date uh, has been adjusted, I would assume. Let's see. Um, you know, certainly, uh, let's just see here, just trying to go through to go through some of the questions. Um, do you have a question? Did you say you have to use Vermont Job Link uh, as their sole search engine? Um, as we talked about today, uh, Vermont Job Link is a requirement for unemployment insurance claimants, uh, but you do not need to use uh, solely Vermont Job Link uh, to do your work search. Uh, you can you know, apply through Indeed or Monster or um, any of the other uh, questions as well. Um, 
Deb, I am just going to scroll back up because I'm kind of getting into uh, some of the, the questions about specific uh, circumstances, just as a reminder for folks in our last uh, five or 10 minutes here before we before we wrap up um, about the, the COVID exemption questions. Um, I don't know if we just kind of want to uh, walk back through these in our last you know, five or 10 minutes. Again, um, we are asking these five questions uh, will be asked starting next week um, as you are reporting your work search. Um, so again, maybe we can just you know, take these last you know, five or so minutes to just kind of uh, go over, just remind folks of what these questions are. We kind of went through them kind of quickly um, at the beginning. Uh, so just maybe we can just kind of read back through these uh, for those who may have joined late or uh, may have missed uh, one of the questions. So uh, we'll just have you kind of read through the questions and we can talk about a little bit more of kind of what they'll have to do um, as they're entering their weekly filings. OK, that sounds great. Uh, so the um, exemption questions um, are as follows and um, again, these questions uh, are yes, no questions, and one or possibly all of them could apply uh, to individuals who are filing. And so the uh, the first question is, have you been instructed by a healthcare provider to quarantine due to COVID-19? Uh, another question is, have you been instructed by a healthcare provider to not return to work because you have a serious health condition and returning to work at this time poses a significant health risk due to COVID-19. Um, the next uh, question is, are you the primary caregiver for a child whose child care is unavailable as a direct result of COVID-19? Uh, the next question uh, is, are you the primary caregiver for a child who is attending virtual or remote school as a direct result of COVID-19. And then the last question under the exemption questions is, are you caring for a family member who has been instructed by a healthcare provider to quarantine due to COVID-19? So um, any, uh, any one of those or, or some, possibly all of those could be at play. Um, in your situation. Now at this time, um, as we are just starting to roll out both the work search and um, uh, working through the exemptions, uh, we are not asking for proof of, of these situations at this time, but uh, that would likely change at some point in the future. Uh, so just be um, keeping that in mind uh, that you may be asked to provide uh, some type of information that verifies uh, one or more of these exemption scenarios. Great. Thank you, Deb. Um, I did see one question that I wanted to address really quick because it was on um, the type of work field um, actually in here in the uh, the weekly filing and the information they'd have to provide. Uh, question was simply, can you explain the type of work field uh, would presume individuals just looking for what type of information um, they would need to put in that field. Oh, absolutely. Um, so for instance, if your um, job contact was for um, office work, uh, administrative work, you could put um, administrative. Uh, if you are uh, in the construction field or um, a carpenter or do painting or those sorts of things. Uh, you could uh, simply put um, painting, carpentry, laborer, basically just a one or two, maybe three um, uh, descriptors to uh, just uh, give an idea of the type of work that was applied for. Great. 
Uh, so just want to, uh, as we kind of wind down here in the last few minutes, uh, just want to remind folks uh, that today's presentation was recorded. Uh, you'll be able to access that through the department's YouTube channel uh, as well as on our website. Uh, we'll also be coming out with more information um, as the claimant portal is updated um, with whether it's questions or you know, fine tuning um, in coming weeks. So we may even have a step-by-step a -step just how to enter for with each screen, um, you know, coming soon, uh, but want to at least provide you uh, with the information that you would need to have uh, when entering your work search uh, starting next week, as well as what information to keep track of uh, as you are conducting your work search activities uh, really starting yesterday, today and uh, until until Friday. Uh, so again, a lot more information to come on this uh, specifically and, and as a work search as a whole. Uh, again, would encourage you to check out our website at labor.vermont.gov. Uh, you can click on any of the work search uh, links that are on our website, um, including uh, tomorrow's virtual town hall session, uh, work search exemptions, part time employees and suitable work. I had seen a couple questions about explaining, um, you know, what it is specifically that, uh, you know, suitable work is today. And I think we'll really be getting in, into that, you know, you know how, what it is that you're qualified for and and salary and all of those types of things um, and how even our workforce development division um, can assist with that um, as you are kind of going through your uh, work search, uh, your job search and even the, the reemployment process um, as a whole. So just again, as a reminder, tomorrow at 1230, uh, tomorrow is Tuesday, May 11th at 1230, uh, we'll be going through that with uh, Cameron Wood, our director of unemployment insurance. And then on Wednesday, like I had said earlier, uh, I did see a lot of questions about freelance work and uh, those claimants who are on PUA. Um, so again, that's you know your self-employed, independent contractors, those folks, and even people who didn't necessarily qualify uh, for unemployment, regular unemployment insurance. Uh, you know, would encourage you to attend that session on Wednesday. I know that information uh, is is ever changing. So uh, appreciate you all for attending today's session. Uh, as I said, more information can be found on our website. Uh, please would encourage you to attend future sessions. Um, and Deb, thank you so much for walking us through. Um, definitely very helpful to, to kind of go through the information, especially for those who uh, may not have done it before, or certainly it's been a while uh, since they've done it. So Deb, thank you so much for, for taking the time this morning. Thank you, it was a pleasure. I'm, I'm very happy for um, the participation from, from everyone today. Great, well again, thank you everybody so much. Uh, please feel free to uh, reach out or check our website for continued updates um, on WorkSearch. Um, and with that, hope you have a great rest of your, of your day and a great rest of your week.